guys, Miss Miklos here, and um, we are actually learning our last lecture of chapter one. Hooray! That means the test is coming up soon. Um, anyways, we're talking about inverse functions. Once again, this is a review concept, um, which you guys learned back in Algebra 2. And um, probably the biggest change from Algebra 2 is I want to spend a little more time um, talking about what the graphs of functions look like. And um, two functions that are inverses of one of another have symmetry over the y equals x line. Our notation that we use, we call like the f inverse of x or inverse of f of x. We use this negative one as our x, it looks like an exponent. But please note that it's not an exponent. It is just a symbol denoting an inverse. So our very first problem says, find the inverse function of f of x equals 3x minus 2. And we're actually going to do three things in this. We're going to actually find it and talk about how we can find an inverse. We're going to verify the inverses. And we're going to go ahead and look at their graphs. Okay, so we are starting with, with finding the inverse, and we're using this switch and solve method. And I'm going to go ahead and just write out what that means. So switch and solve means we are going to switch the two variables, x and y. So we're switching the input and the output. And then we are going to solve our new equation for y. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this first function. We said it is f of x equals 3x minus 2. And you guys might be thinking, well, how can I switch x and y if I don't see a y? But we all know f of x means y, so I'm going to go ahead and make this x and make our x value equal to y. So that is the switch where I'm switching x and y. Now I just need to do some simple math and isolate this y. So I'm going to add two to both sides, and then I'm going to have to divide both sides by 3. So I could write this as the inverse of f of x is equal to 1 third x plus 2 thirds. Or you also could have just left it as x plus 2 over 3. Okay, I would be totally fine with that as well. So that is how we find an inverse. We switch x and y and then solve the equation for y. So I want to go ahead and show us graphically what this looks like. And you guys should expect to be um, kind of tested in all three of these ways. Okay, I'm going to graph f of x in blue and it says 3x minus 2, so I know my y-intercept is negative 2 and my slope is 3, so I'm going to go up 3 and over 1. Okay, my line might be a little rough here. Oh, actually, I was pretty good. That's pretty impressive. Yes, I did just compliment myself. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do here, well, actually, I should label that, but I'm drawing the line y equals x. And what that is, that is going to be our line of reflection. And here I'm going to label that line f of x because that's what it was. Okay, we said our inverse is one-third x plus two-thirds. So that means I'm going to start at two-thirds, and I'm going to go up one and over three. I'm going to go down one to the left three. Oh, and once again, I am on fire with my lines here. Those look pretty good. So... Um, I'm also going to label that this is our inverse. And what I want to point out, the whole point of an inverse function is that I can fold it on this line, which is y equals x. That is the line of reflection. And every single point will be reflected on the inverse and vice versa. Okay, so often we will need to graph our inverses. Um, I'm also going to talk about how we could do that using our graphing calculator at the end of this video. The final thing we're going to do here is actually verify that these are inverses. And notice we're using our composition in order to do this. So I'm going to start with doing f of 
the inverse of f of x. So I know that I need to always start in the middle, and we said that the inverse is 1 third x plus 2 thirds. So that means now in function, which was 3x minus 2, I'm going to do 3 instead of x. I'm replacing it with our new input, which was 1 third x plus 2 thirds. So now I'm going to go ahead and simplify this by distributing the 3. And 3 times 1 third is 1, so I just get x plus 3 times 2 thirds is 2 minus 2, which is x. So we are halfway there. Okay, we should get x as our final answer. Final thing we need to do is go ahead and do the inverse of f of f of x. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out. So here's the inverse of f of f of x. Okay, I'm going to start on the inside. This time we know f of x is 3x minus 2. So that means in our inverse function, wherever there's an x, I'm replacing it with 3x minus 2. So I end up getting 1 third times 3x minus 2, because that is our input, plus 2 thirds. When I distribute that 1 third, I get x minus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds, which is x. So I have gone ahead and proved algebraically that these are inverses of one another. Okay, number two asks us to find the inverse function and then verify. So um, for part A, we're going to switch and solve first. So I'm going to say x equals 4y. And when I solve 4y, I get 1 fourth x equals y or equals our inverse function. So in order to verify this, I'm going to do f of our inverse of f of x which is going to be f of, our inverse is 1 fourth x, so that means in function f of x, wherever there's an x, I'm replacing it with our new input. So I would get 4 times our new input is 1 fourth x, so I end up getting x. Okay, so then I also need to do the inverse of f of f of x. So I'm going to go ahead and say the inverse of f of 4x, and let me actually put that in red there for us. So that means in my inverse here, wherever there's an x, I'm replacing it with 4x. So I have 1 fourth times x instead of x, we said we were putting in our new input, which is 4x. 1 fourth times 4x is x. So we have proved that, the, that these two functions are inverses. Notice in my proof, the answer is not what is important. It is all the work that we are showing. Okay, part B, we're doing the same thing. I'm going to switch and solve and write x equals the cube root of y. And you guys may remember from last year, the way to get rid of a cube root is to cube both sides. So I get x cubed equals y, which I know is equal to our inverse of f of x. So if I'm proving this, I'm going to say f of our inverse of f of x. So f of x cubed is our inverse, so that is our input, which means in function f, wherever there's an x, I'm replacing it with our new input, which is x cubed. I know that the cube root of x cubed is just x, so we're good. Lastly, I need to prove that the inverse of f of f of x, how many times can you say of an f? Um, is also equal to x there. So the inverse of f of x, or I should say the inverse of f of, I'm confusing myself even, um, I need to replace this, our new input is function f. So looking up here, this is function f, so I'm going to write the cube root of x. 
So what this means is function, the inverse of f, I'm going to go ahead and replace this x with our new input. So I have the cube root of x cubed, which ends up being x. Okay, so once again, to verify, we need to know this concept of composition really, really well. Okay, so we're gonna trans we're gonna graph those two like at the end um, when I'm done with talking about this handout. Just it'll be easier for me to make that transition. So I'm gonna skip to number three. It says which of the following is the inverse of f of x equals five over x minus two? And there are really a few different ways we could go about doing this, and it's kind of open ended, which means you get to choose what you think is easiest. We could switch and solve. We could go ahead and graph these and see if they are reflections of each other, or we could also go ahead and use composition and see what works. I actually think it would be easiest to use switch and solve, okay, since they didn't give us any other parameters, so I'm gonna say x equals five over y minus two. And so in order to solve this, we do need to use a little bit of algebra. I'm going to go ahead and do x times the quantity y minus 2 equals 5 because I had to multiply both sides by y minus 2 in order to go ahead and eliminate that fraction. I know that I want to somehow get this x um, on the other side because I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and then divide both sides by x. So I have y minus 2 equals 5 over x. If I want to get y all by itself, I need to add 2 to both sides. So I get y equals 5 over x plus 2. So if we look at our options, it looks like h of x would be our inverse function. Okay, so that's it for this handout. Um, please now, um, I guess, keep this out because we're going to use some of this info and take out your graphing calculator. Okay, so um, now we're gonna go ahead and graph the problems from number two on our graphing calculator. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start by pressing Y equals, and um, part A on number two was 4X, so I'm gonna type in 4X. And if I graphed this on its own right now, okay, here's zoom six, um, it's just gonna look like that, okay? Um, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put in a graph of y equals x because we know that that's the line of reflection and that might help me in figuring this out further. So right now if I graphed this, okay, here's y equals x and here's our first function. So the way that we can go ahead and graph inverses, there's two different ways we could do it. We could go ahead and put in um, our equation, which is 1 fourth x, and that's fine. In fact, if I press y equals, and I'm going to go ahead and in parentheses put 1 divided by 4 x, because that's what we got as our inverse, and I'm going to go ahead and graph this now. And we can see that if we fold it on this line right here, these two lines would be reflections of one another. Now, another way that we can go about doing this, I'm going to press y equals, and I'm actually going to clear out the line of reflection and clear out um, our inverse. So all I have in here is our original function. So I'm going to go ahead and press second program, which gives me this draw menu. And if I scroll down, or scroll up, and it's actually easier to scroll up, but I just want to show you guys that, there we go, option number eight says draw inverse, so I'm going to choose that option. Now, I also need to tell my calculator what do I want to draw the, draw the inverse of, and the nice thing is I already have it as y sub one in my graphing calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and press the variable button, and I want the y variables. And option number one says function, and that's exactly what I want. And now I can choose wherever I had gone ahead and put 
um, my function, if I put it as y sub 1, which I did, I'm going to choose y sub 1. If I put it in a different spot, y sub 2 and so on, I would choose that spot. Okay, so I'm choosing y sub 1, and now I'm just going to press enter. And we can see, okay, that was my original graph, and there is my inverse graph. So let's go ahead, and now I'm going to go ahead and change um, to B. So um, B was, F of X was the cube root of X. So the way I get to cube root, I'm going to type in, well, I'll show you both ways. Okay, if I press math, cube root is actually number four, and option five, it has a little X as a square root. So I'm going to choose option four and put in x. So if I graphed this on its own, it's slowly coming around, but this is what our um, graph will look like. So we can kind of imagine what the reflection of y over x, y equals x would look like. And in order to get there, I'm going to do a second program to get to the draw menu. And I'm going to move up this time to go to option eight. And then I'm pressing variables, and I'm going to the y variables, and I'm choosing option one, and it is graphing that second graph for me now. Um, another thing that I just want to show you guys real quickly is if you guys press the table, which is second graph, okay, what this is doing, it's giving us different ordered pairs. And we know technically if it's a reflection over y and x, that means the x values and y values are switching. So if I actually typed in um, the inverse function to graph, we could compare the ordered pairs and notice that all the x's and y's are switched. Okay, so um, if you guys need to see how I graph that in my graphing calculator, go ahead and rewind and watch that again. But um, that's how we can quickly verify inverses in our graphing calculator.